Episode of the Coaster 101 podcast. I'm Eric Woolley, joined as usual by Andrew Stillwell. Andrew, how's it going? I cannot complain. Beautiful day in the neighborhood. Great. Uh, and after being replaced briefly by new Shane, uh, Carly Wiesel last week, we're glad to welcome back old Shane to the podcast. Shane, how's it going? Uh, well, it's good to be back. It's good to be back here recording a podcast as old Shane, so... <laughs> I'm excited. Is that the first time anybody's ever called you old with Coaster101.com? Uh, yeah, pretty much. For, with this website, yeah. This is the first time I've been called old. Uh, so we've got a listener question this week that relates to what we're going to be talking about today. Um, and that is from Chris. What is your favorite Universal Parks attraction of all time? Uh, Shane, why don't we start with you? Yeah, well, for me, this was very, very easy uh, because it's also my favorite theme park attraction of all time. Uh, and then it is Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey. Um, I mean, what what else is there really to say about this that hasn't been said? Um, revolutionary ride system with that um, robot arm um, is awesome. Perfect blend of physical sets and screens. Uh, it's a great length. Um, the queue is fantastic. Um, all around good. I think it's the best theme park ride ever built. Having purposely seen... Uh, nothing from Rise of the Resistance yet. I'm just going to stick with this for now, uh, as Forbidden Journey is not only my favorite ride, but uh, the best ride at a Universal Park. I think what about you guys? I think that's a very fair choice. Andrew, what's yours? I, I came down to two, but because they got rid of Jaws and you know Amity 6 sunk out by the lighthouse and Amity 3 was right behind it, um, I've got to go with Men in Black Alien Attack at Universal Studios Florida. Uh, just celebrated its 20th anniversary this year and is still probably to this day one of the best dark ride shooters out there. Uh, the two tracks inside the, the giant show building. I've never maxed out my score. I've always It's always been a goal of mine. I've come close. I've gotten into the seven or 800,000s, but never have gotten the... Uh, the, 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 the coveted... The, uh... the, I'm not a Galaxy Defender like I am at uh, Buzz Lightyear down the road. <laughs> but I just, I love Men in Black so much. I If I've got to pick a favorite track, it's the, if you go down the stairs, it's the one on the right-hand side, which I believe is typically the uh, Express Pass uh, yep. track at Universal Studios Florida. Um, I got really good there. We used to go down and stay on site, so we would go and we would have Express for any attraction in the park. And... There were days, like, I would rope drop Men in Black Alien Attack and, like, ride it, like, three or four times before anybody else would, would come to that area of the park. So, it's got to be Men in Black Alien Attack for me. Eric, what about you? Yeah, uh, both very good choices, I think. Objectively, for Band Journey is probably one of... That might be the best, purely that way. And Men in Black Alien Attack, I, I agree, Andrew. I think that's probably my favorite interactive shooting ride at any park. Um my first thought was is the Back to the Future ride, which I think is heavily nostalgia based. Um, like I, I love the Back to the Future movies and getting in the DeLorean and the way that it was set up, where because of the size of the room that all the DeLoreans are in, you can't see the other DeLoreans. So as a, a little kid, I was sort of like, oh, this is all, like I feel like I'm by myself and I'm chasing Biff and Doc is talking to me. This is the best thing in the world. Doc's chicken stand is outside, so I can get some fried chicken afterwards. What could be better than that? Um, so of all time, that's that's probably like nostalgically my favorite. The other one I would lean towards of things still open, and this is mostly because I don't think I can experience this thing anywhere else, is uh, the Waterworld stunt show, Waterworld, a live sea war spectacular. The I, I think it speaks to the reason why there is still a Waterworld <laughs> attraction <laughs> 25 <laughs> years after a flopped movie <laughs> uh, came out that it's still there and hugely popular. Like, the scale of that stunt show... I mean, I always liked... I liked the previous Miami Vice stunt show as well that was in that uh, in that theater. But, like, man, the amount of jet skiing and explosions and impressive falls off of really high buildings uh culminating in the final like huge action sequence of an airplane comes flying over from the back of the like set and crashes into the pool is just the scale of that is not something that i think 
I don't even know if that would ever be done somewhere because now, I mean, we I have not been on the, the born stuntacular at Universal Orlando, but it's clearly like it's super technologically advanced, but doesn't have as much of that like we're going to throw a bunch of crazy stuff at you. Um, I think also it's something that only Universal and Hollywood can do because most of the stunt actors that perform in it are actual stuntmen who this is like this is their day job and then when movies come up they go do stunts for a mission impossible movie or whatever so <laughs> the quality of the stunts is the same quality that you get from watching a giant blockbuster movie except you get to see it live and in person uh so i think i think that is actually my favorite out there are, we, are you worried about giving uh, Waterworld spoilers 25 years after the fact? <laughs> for the stunt show or for the movie? Either one. Uh, I guess the answer is no to both of those. <laughs> uh, certainly not for the movie, but I don't know if I could give any spoiler. <laughs> not there's, sure I remember There's probably enough. a YouTube video somewhere. <laughs> I, I have seen the movie, though. I'm one of the, I don't know. Ten thousand people that I have seen also it. <laughs> after I after I went after I saw the stunt show I was I loved it so much I was like wow I'm gonna watch the movie now and then after I watched the movie I was like I need to go see the stunt show again and wipe my mind of the movie so yes I do agree with you though it's the best uh, theme park show I've ever seen and one of the most impressive um, physical attractions out there yeah. Um, I, and I think we'll we can probably talk about that even more later on because this yes. week we are talking about the under construction, pretty close to being finished actually. Universal Studios Beijing. Um, Universal recently released a bunch of new photos and uh, a preview video and renderings of this huge new park that is opening just outside Beijing. It's scheduled to open in. 2021 sometime in 2021 uh shane you you wrote up an article about it on on our site uh give us a a quick rundown of of universal studios beijing yeah so uh this has been something that's been in the works for a little while um it was originally announced around 2014 uh and broke ground four years ago in 2016 um and the park is going to consist of seven highly themed lands Uh, that are situated uh, around a lagoon. Um, And an interesting fact about the park is that it is the most expensive theme park ever built at opening. Uh, It's about $6.5 billion they're putting into the construction of this park, uh, which that will include two hotels, uh, which is the Universal Grand, which is the large, will probably be the more um, higher-end hotel, um, and a hotel called the Nuo Resort, which looks like it's going to be more of the moderate. Um, kind of reminds me of the um, Royal Pacific uh, Hotel at Universal Orlando. Um, so this is pretty much what we knew um, going into it. But then we got so much more uh, new information through the videos um, and pictures that got released a few days ago. Um, So the first land uh, that was introduced is called Transformers Metro Base, um, and it looks very similar to uh, Marvel Superhero Island um, at Islands of Adventure uh, at Universal Orlando. Very similar seems like an understatement. I'm sorry. To to me, it looks like a a, just a complete just reskin. You take out the um, the 2D comic book characters and you put in some... uh, you put in some Transformers characters, and it's the exact same land, I feel like. Yeah, it's it's essentially... I mean, that's not helped by the uh, clone of the Incredible Hulk coaster, which is going to be called the uh, Decepticoaster, which I'm assuming is also going off the trend of the Velocicoaster. Uh, Universal getting very creative with these names. My, my, um, my first thought when I saw that was, wait, is that the real name, or is that just a placeholder <laughs> that fans have been using? <laughs> I think so. I actually noticed that's a trend with a lot of these names that, that either they're very simple or very distinct, like Decepticoaster. And I think the reason might be um, for like translation purposes. Yeah. Um, it would probably be clear that way. Still doesn't mean I'm a big fan of the name, but that is at least the explanation um, I've given. And so, like we said, uh, Decepticoaster, that's a clone of the uh, launch coaster, the Incredible Hulk. Um, and the theming of the entire land is uh, pretty interesting. So what we know as of now, Universal has said that the entire land is a giant 
transformer that has crashed down in the middle of China and is now serving as the base for this nest organization. Um, what do you guys think about that theme? I, as someone who's not the biggest Transformer movie fan, and you guys have both seen more movies, uh, evidenced by the fact that you've both seen Waterworld, um, you guys <laughs> both have seen more movies than I am. I think it's fine. I don't know what the cultural relevance of Transformers still is in 2020. I don't know if they're still making those movies. They probably are. There's probably been like six, and you know John Cena's probably in like three of them. So it's... Um, <laughs> Yeah, I think it's it's fine for what it is. Obviously, they cannot use the uh, they can't use the Marvel license that they have at Islands of Adventure, um, just because Disney has that kind of re-theme. Obviously, Six Flags has the DC comics, Disney has Marvel, so you go to the next best sci-fi property that Universal owns, and that's gonna be Transformers. Jurassic World. Oh, yes, Transformers. <laughs> that's right. And I, I think um, the trans. My memory is that the Transformers movies are very successful in China specifically. I mean, I guess the, the, I think yes. the Marvel movies are as well, but like I think that certainly the recent Transformers movies have done way better overseas and specifically in China than they than They, they definitely have, here. as evidenced by the fact that one of the newer movies is set almost exclusively in China because they know that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so there's a few other rides in this land. Uh, the first one, another interesting name here, is called Bumblebee Boogie. Uh, and that's going to be a teacups ride. Um, if you want to keep up with the superhero island comparison, this looks pretty much like the uh, Storm Force Accelitron ride, which is kind of a newer age teacups, uh, like the alien swirling saucers in Hollywood Studios. Um, this one, it looks like it has a bumblebee animatronic in the middle of it, which might be cool. And it, um, and it looks like guys... it's it looks like it's playing music, which I feel like it's set up to have a fun soundtrack if Bumblebee yes. is like DJing. Yeah, which right. fits with his character. Have either of you guys been on Alien Swirling Saucers? Because I, I didn't get to go on it, but if you've been on it, I'm curious to hear what it's like. I have I not, have, so, Andrew. I have not either, but <laughs> I thought, I thought I, I've not, but I think Swirling Saucers is more like a, kind of like a multi-base whip as opposed to a teacups. I could be wrong there. Okay. But, um, Yeah, the, this concept art makes it look like it's similar to that also. So, it, yeah, I don't like spinning. So that's uh, Got <laughs> that's gonna be a big no from me. So we can't <laughs> so we can't talk about Bumblebee Boogie at all then. But uh, what do you guys think of? So like the the feature the biggest ride is the Decepticoaster. Uh, yes. What do you think of of getting another Hulk and the pictures of it, the theming and the design of it? Um, I don't mind it personally because the Hulk is a great coaster in my opinion, um, and I like that they're having the. Uh, re-updated um, trains with those awesome headlights. Um, we don't know if it's going to have onboard audio like The Incredible Hulk. I, I think it's probably a safe bet. Um, I think it would be pretty cool to have that. Um, but originally I wasn't a fan of the gray track um, just because I don't think it's as appealing to the eye as that striking green on The Incredible Hulk. Um, but it fits with the theme and the launch tunnel looks awesome. Um, so I'm, I'm not complaining. Uh, Andrew, what do you think? I like it a lot. Um, again, just as long as if we do have uh, onboard audio, let's not make it uh, by the guy from Fallout Boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe they'll do um, like Linkin Park, like the Transformers movies. There we go. Uh, interesting. Um, all right. So we also have uh, in the land a clone of the uh, Transformers The Ride attraction called uh, Transformers Battle for the Allspark. Um, not much to say about it because as far as we know, it's not going to be very different. It's probably going to be exactly the same as the other Transformers ride, which, again, I'm not complaining about because it's a fantastic ride. Um, I don't know. Do you guys have anything to say about that? No. So you you mean it's the universal Beijing version of Spider-Man? <laughs> it's, yes. It's, you know, the, the ride vehicles for motioneering, they've got that, that great motion-based platform. And I, I love Spider-Man. I love the Transformers ride, despite not seeing any of the movies. Um, but I... Obviously, it's it's good enough to be at multiple Universal parks around the world. So obviously, it'll be it'll be a winner here as well. Yeah, I, th I mean, it's a solid ride. It makes sense that they would clone that. I actually am <laughs> I'm less surprised that they made a clone of that than they made a clone of Hulk because I sort of thought, oh, the roller coaster it wouldn't cost them that much more to sort of design a new layout to fit in the new land. Um, whereas with the dark ride, it feels much more like oh, okay, they can sort of drop that down in the same building and have it be more straightforward. But yeah, makes sense uh, to say about it. 
so that does it for the Transformers land. Uh, then we've also the next land, um, unless you guys have any final thoughts on Transformers, um, the next land is Kung Fu Panda Land of Awesomeness, which is just the most Kung Fu Panda name you can be. Um, and this is the first uh, Kung Fu Panda full land in a Universal Park. Uh, and this is probably because this is the first park being built after Universal acquired DreamWorks. Um, they have the Kung Fu Panda ride at Universal Studios Hollywood, um, which is a lot of fun. That was a redo of the Shrek ride. Um, that has a lot of projection mapping and things like that. But this new land um, is going to be inside. It's actually going to be an indoor land um, and feature a few different rides. Um, there is a boat ride called uh, Journey of the Dragon Warrior. Um, have you guys had a chance to look at that? Uh, yeah, the I mean in the in the preview video that they released, there there were a few clips of it. I think the part that looked most, I, it's a little hard to tell exactly how how much of a like what kind of boat ride it is. Um, there was a one of the clips showed like a small drop, so it made me think of like. Pirates of the Caribbean, uh, at least at Disneyland. I always forget what the differences are, but, like, it's not a thrill ride, but, like, yeah, there's there's a couple little drops, and you might get splashed, but mostly you're looking at Poe doing things. So I couldn't tell if it's, like, that level or if it's a little more intense than that, but, I mean, I I think Kung Fu Panda is a great series. It makes sense that they are, you know, the Chinese park will have this, um, uh, and I imagine it would be really fun, you know, as long as they, it's a, a good... Uh, subject for sort of a, a story-based ride where you can you can put some jokes and you can have some Poe projection map doing some fun things and that kind of stuff. It looks yeah, fun. I think I think um, as long as Universal, it, it's it's more Pirates of the Caribbean and less um, Navi River Journey. Um, I think uh, <laughs> Universal is going to have a uh, they'll have a winner here. I think obviously, like Eric said, Kung Fu Panda is a it's an IP that works really well, especially in China. Like I said, as long as it's more exciting than Navi River Journey, uh, it's going to be great. And that's <laughs> fortunately or unfortunately not a uh, difficult level to reach. Yeah, not a high mm. bar. <laughs> I will not speak to that because I happen to like that ride a lot. But anyway, uh, moving on with the rest <laughs> of the land. Um, they also have a uh, flat ride that's themed to lanterns, which is like a balloon ride. Um, and also a highly themed carousel, so that is going to be a really neat land. And I like um, that. Next... I like that it's all indoors. I think it like the, the yeah. construction photos on themeparkx.com looked. It looks very pretty. Really neat. It and, looks like one of those like parks they have in Dubai, where it's like inside but themed to look like it's outside. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Uh, all right, so next up we have. I think I am by far most excited for this land. Uh, this is Jurassic World Isla Nublar. Uh, there is a lot to talk about in this land, um, but the biggest ride is called Jurassic World Adventure. Uh, this is a dark ride, um, and from the looks of it, from the pictures we've seen, it's going to use those oceaneering vehicles, so just like Spider-Man and Transformers. Um, but what it does look like in these pictures um, is that there's going to be a lot more physical sets, and we're seeing some trucks, uh, some theming around... Uh, the Jurassic World Park as a whole. It looks like this is taking place during the uh, finale of the Jurassic World movie because you have the uh, T-Rex and the Indominus Rex, which hopefully are going to be huge animatronics like we're looking at here. Um, but this opens up a lot of doors for this type of ride. Um, I'm assuming you guys would want to see more of the physical sets, right? Absolutely. I love a I love a physical set. Obviously, Universal in the past has they've taken a lot of flack from fans of theme parks for their screens and screens and screens and screens and screens and, um, you know, I love a good physical practical set. Um, and I believe the Jurassic Park River Adventure does that really well. And I'm, obviously, I know that the River Adventure and this uh, Jurassic World Adventure are completely different attractions. But I think I. Yeah, I love a I love a physical set. That's just that's the way it is. I think watching the the this video scene, it certainly looks like um I think there were still renderings, but it looked like the the at least based on camera angles that the giant dinosaurs fighting with each other look like animatronic practical things and so if I mean that would certainly be very exciting. I mean that's the the favorite thing and the thing that I remember being terrified on the Jurassic Park River uh, <laughs> adventure as a kid by maybe even a little bit still is like when the physical T-Rex head comes down to it's a spoiler on another 25 year old attraction uh, <laughs> uh, the giant T-Rex head comes down as you're about to go down the drop and so like 
dinosaurs of that scale are so cool. Um, and and yep. Universal has done it before because they've they've done that with the with the Jurassic Park uh, River Adventures. So um, yeah, I mean, if they can do that and have it be an indoor ride, then it's like, could this could this surpass Transformers and Spider Man as the best of this exact same mm. <laughs> track vehicle? I uh, think there's definitely potential there. Even though I, I love Spider-Man so much, I think there is potential. If they do this right, um, yeah. I think it could top it. I just want to so, know real quick, how have we gotten so much Jurassic World in the Universal Parks, but we don't have one of those orb rides yet where you're in the, the, the glass vehicle? Oh, the gyrosphere. The gyrosphere, yeah. That's a great question. You know what? I'm hoping that Epic Universe is where we're going to see that gyrosphere. If that park even opens at this point, um, I think that would be a great place for it. Uh, so uh, the land also, it's worth mentioning there, this land is, I think, going to be the biggest land. Um, and there's also some huge physical sets. Like they have a very large waterfall um, set, which you go by uh, when you're riding the uh, family coaster that's going to be uh, a suspended coaster. This looks different from the uh, Pteranodon Flyers poster. If you look at the pictures, um, it goes indoors uh, and outdoors. Um, which that looks pretty neat inside the um, visitor center from the Jurassic World movie. Uh, there's going to be Camp Jurassic, which is a play area, and that family coaster also goes through there. Uh, a Velociraptor training experience, um, and then they also a separate building um, called the Aviary, which is where the um, pterodactyls and pteranodons are in the movie. We don't really know what's going to be in there, um, so that is going to be something to keep an eye on to see um, what goes inside that big glass dome um and then there's also a restaurant or what appears to be a um pretty high class restaurant called hammond's which is named after uh john hammond of course um any last thoughts on the land as a whole yeah i want to just get into some quick coaster nerd talk because that's our audience and our podcast uh that pteranodon flyer uh, according to wikipedia it is a uh, mock rides inverted power coaster I know that the Pteranodon Flyers at Islands of Adventure was, I believe, Set Point had a hand in that. Um, so it, it is going to be completely different, which is always a good thing to see. Will, will, it, will it be one that adults can ride without having children with them? Um, it, it, from the pictures, it looks that way, so we can hope. Perfect. <laughs> that's um, that's what right. our listeners actually care about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. Um, so next up we have uh, Minion Land, which everybody loves the Minions. Uh, there's going to be this is also a fairly big land. Uh, there's going to be a clone of the Despicable Me Minion Mayhem ride, um, which is that uh, simulator attraction they have at the other parks. Um, then they have an indoor section, another indoor section uh, that's going to be themed to the Super Silly Fun Land, uh, like they have in California, except that is uh, outside. This is going to be indoors. Uh, there's going to be the Dumbo style ride that they have, and there's also a little kitty coaster, which wasn't mentioned in the um, tra- teaser trailer they put out. But there's a few pictures floating around of this uh, little kitty coaster. Um, looks like maybe like in the style of like a dragon coaster or something. Uh, did you guys see that? Yeah, I saw the uh, I saw the kitty coaster, and I just I really wish one of these universal parks if they were building a super silly fun land they would build that wooden coaster from the original despicable me um where grew and the the girls are riding and like he's losing his mind and they're super excited but i think that would to me i would love to see that more than another kitty coaster because i know we're going to get into it another family coaster here in a little bit um but i you know as you said, Shane, people love the minions, so I think it'll it'll be just fine for their uh, their audience, and it's kind of in that that same vein of a Fivel's Playland or a Seuss Landing, um, just kind of that family area. And, and Kung Fu Panda does that same thing as well, but it's um it it's going to be a great area for families. Yeah, I mean, and Minion Mayhem is fun enough at Universal Hollywood; like it's enjoyable. That I think it, it's reasonable that there's a, a clone of that coming. Um, I think it's a little interesting that they have sort of two uh, lands seem to sort of two different kid targeted animated things. Um, although I guess I was sort of thinking, oh, is, is Kung Fu Banda like targeted to like slightly older kids? And maybe it is, although I feel like both of the series are pretty popular among adults and, and interesting enough that adults find them entertaining, um, which I think is also good that these are like, oh, okay, they're like an adult 
with kids can go and walk around Minion Land and not be super bored. <laughs> I think it's like it sounds like Agreed. there will be enough there that it's like, oh yeah, this this can actually keep a family entertained. Mm-hmm. Um, then the last thing to note in Minion Land uh, is the Illumination Theater. Um, which is where they're going to have the Sing on Tour show. Uh, that's at another one of the international parks, which is uh, the 2016 movie Sing. Uh, that's what that is based on. So it looks like a pretty expansive land. Um, that, so I'm excited to see how they develop that. That seems like it also gives them a little flexibility that if Illuminations uh, or Illumination makes has, has a, a new IP that has a hit, maybe they can swap swap in there and do some different things with it. Yes, um, definitely. Giving them a little flexibility. All right, next up, Eric is going to be very excited about this one. So excited. Uh, we have the Waterworld Land. This is a full land. doesn't look as big <laughs> as the other ones, but it's still a land that's themed to Waterworld. It's going to have the stunt show that we all love. It's also going to have, looks like, some shops and restaurants, and it's built to look like the movie. I don't know. What do you, Eric, it's, take it I, away. I don't, <laughs> I don't understand at all. I love that they're building the Waterworld stunt show. I mean, like I said, I think it's the best stunt show there is. I don't know. I mean, is it going to be different at all from the one in Hollywood? You would think, well, could they apply some new technology to it to maybe have some more advanced effects? Will they have the same quality of stunt performers like I talked about <laughs> in Hollywood? Maybe not. Um, but uh, that's exciting. I don't understand why or how you would get a full land out of it like that seems unnecessary i mean it's not like i'm trying to remember the movie even and think eh, like they live in these little tiny atolls in the middle of nowhere and there's no gra- <laughs> like what re- what restaurant is there i don't understand That's the issue right is because the whole conceit of the movie is that they live on these atolls in the middle of the ocean so I don't know how they're going to keep that immersive. And like, lots of it is Kevin Costner by himself on a boat. So it's sort of like <laughs> I don't I don't know what exactly you would put in yeah. the rest of the land beyond the stuff. I mean, I'm excited. I'm going to give it a chance. But I think it's uh, – I, I don't know how I feel about getting a Waterworld land before getting a uh, Back to the Future <laughs> land <laughs> or a Jaws land. Uh, but I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be open to it. I'm going to see what it looks like. And we're, we're going to get into the, the next themed land is sort of more of a generic movies land. I'm sort of thinking, yes. like, why not just stick the Sun show in there? Like, you could, mm-hmm. like, it doesn't seem like it needs its own land. It certainly doesn't have one at Universal Studios Hollywood. Um, Hollywood doesn't yeah. exactly have <laughs> lands quite in the same way, but I yeah. don't know. I'm, ex- I, like, I, I'm excited mostly because I think it's a good sign of... The Waterworld stunt show is not going anywhere. <laughs> like, <laughs> Universal's building a new one. Cool. We've got at least another decade of it here in California. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, like you mentioned, Eric, the next land is just called Hollywood. Um, and as far as we know, it's uh, going to have just a uh, another show called Lights, Camera, Action um, that looks like uh, Steven Spielberg and uh, Zhang Yimou had a hand in that um, to – director steven spielberg obviously famous uh in america and they have a chinese director in there also which is pretty cool um which is going to be a clone from the universal uh studio singapore uh, it looks like it's going to be a very um high action not really a stunt show but um you know that we have things exploding and water splashing what do you guys think about this this to me screams like mid 90s um, Disney MGM Studios with Catastrophe Canyon and the Earthquake Attraction at Universal Studios Florida. I know it's not necessarily, it's special effects demonstrations. And before this record, I didn't even realize it was a, it existed at Universal Singapore. Um, but people love kind of that behind the scenes look. I'm sure there's a, you know, a green screen effect. And, you know, you probably won't have somebody falling down the elevator shaft like they do did in the old uh, earthquake soundstage room. But, um, yeah, I think this is, it's a cool, it's Universal Studios, their studio parks tagline for the longest time was ride the movies. And while this isn't a ride, it's definitely a look kind of behind the curtain at as to how movies are made. Yeah, I mean, I, so I have... No, I I know nothing about the two attractions Andrew just mentioned. So when I saw it, my first thoughts were, oh, this looks like if you took segments of the Universal Studios tram tour at uh, Hollywood, um, you know, things like uh, the the earthquake section of that or think, well, yeah, there's got to be some sparks and there's got to be a barrel that catches on fire and something's going to break in half and come back together. Um, The other thing 
really dating myself, the other thing that it vaguely reminded me of is many years ago at Universal uh, Studios Hollywood, there was a the backdraft attraction, which was a, like, it wasn't a vehicle. You walked into a room and you stood there, which is kind of what this looks like, and then got to see a bunch of pyrotechnics. <laughs> That's, like, my vague memory of it. it. was like, yeah, a bunch of things burnt on fire, and, like, a catwalk collapsed, and a barrel rolled down and caught on fire. It was like, okay, it's something like that, which is... Uh, yeah, I mean, like Andrew said, that's that's what Universal is. A part of it that sort of harkens back to older Universal, which is nice to have. Is yeah, there should. It's good that they still have some movie studio aspect to it. Of hey, this is how something works, and here are some cool effects that we can do, and and exciting because there's loud noises and and fire. And you mentioned backdraft, and that kind of made me think of Twister. Twister ride it out um, yes, yes. at Universal Studios Florida. Kind of in that same regard. It's it's all happening right in front of you. There's fire. There's explosions. You know, there's a big uh, mushroom cloud of fire. So it's it'll be cool. I think so too. And and I like that they that they are also using and that they, you know it's the Steven Spielberg one, but then they will tweak it to have some part of the intro be by a, a Chinese film director who I think he, he directed the opening and closing ceremonies of the Beijing Olympics, which is where Americans have probably seen his work most likely. Um, so that thing to both tie into, yeah, global audience and also a more, hey, this is a park for China. Right. Um, so the last land here, um, land we're all familiar with, uh, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter it's going to be pretty much exactly the same as it is in Universal Studios Hollywood because it's going to have the Forbidden Journey dark ride, and it's also going to have the Flight of the Hippogriff family coaster. Uh, there's not much to say about those two that hasn't been said, but they're also going to have the uh, Nighttime Lights on Hogwarts projection show, which is going to be really cool. Um, and something else that, that's interesting that I was thinking of is this could be the first Wizarding World of Harry Potter because of the weather in China to actually have snow. Um, in the land at some points throughout the year. So, I don't know. To me, that that would be pretty neat to walk around there with some snow falling and drinking some hot butter beer. I don't know. What do you guys think? Yeah, I love, I think, the Wizarding World. Um, Universal's proven that it's at its parks around the world. It just prints money. So, I... You can't build a new Universal park um, without a Harry Potter something. I mean, I'm, I'm... trying to remember from the epic universe renderings or rumors or whatever it was if there was any sort of you know ministry of magic or like a third harry potter not a gate I, but a, I a theme there was piece. some i think fantastic beasts there we go be like fantastic beast themes which maybe won't happen anymore i mean yeah, all we'll of see. epic universe who knows what's gonna happen with it but uh. but yeah i think i obviously shane you you said a lot of glowing things at the beginning of the podcast about Forbidden Journey, and I echo those. Um, Flight of the Hippogriff, uh, it is, it's a mock mock family coaster as opposed to a Vekoma like uh, Universal Studios Florida and Universal Japan, uh, a mock clone uh, of the coaster to Hollywood. And I saw a version, kind of a holiday version of the uh, Nighttime Lights at Universal Studios or Islands of Adventure. And I think... It's a just a fantastic demonstration of technology and projection mapping. And even for somebody who I I'm kind of past my my diehard Harry Potter fandom, it was still very cool to see that in in real time. Uh, yes, I, I have also seen seen it at certainly in Florida and maybe saw it in uh, California. And it's yeah, it's a, it's a very cool use of the castle. As oh hey, we can. We've got essentially a giant set here. We can do some other cool stuff with it. Right. Um, So the last thing um, worth mentioning here, I think, before we close out is uh, this park, the size of it, um, the land itself that they have purchased for this is a thousand acres. Um, And all this stuff that we just talked about uh, only takes up 400 uh, which leaves a lot of a uh, lot of space, and it's interesting because in the concept art, um, you can see peeking out on some of the sides, uh, they have what appears to be a clone of Volcano Bay. Um, now I don't know if that's actually something that's going to be happening or if it's just something to fill space in the concept art. Uh, but there's certainly a lot more that they can do with this area. Yeah, I mean, I think when I when looking at all the preview when I saw sort of the size of 
Wizarding World in particular, that was I was a little surprised that it was like, oh, this looks like the size of the Universal Hollywood one, which eh, it might be a little bit bigger to give more space for crowds and stuff than that. Um, but I was my thought then when seeing, oh, the whole park is only a, half of this land that they bought. There's clearly they're going to build a, a Diagon right, act, Alley right. section at some point. Like You wouldn't yep. have that much land and say, no, nope, we're just going to have the small kind of, the, the smaller mm-hmm. uh, Wizarding World section. As or Andrew said, uh, or it Hagrid's. Too much money. Yeah, just, Hagrid's, I think, could go there too. Um, all right, so I think that about wraps it up for our talk about uh, Universal Studios Beijing. Hopefully we'll be able to get over to Beijing once the world becomes normal again. Uh, But until then, that does it for this week's episode of the podcast. For more information about Universal Studios Beijing, be sure to check out the article that I wrote by texting Beijing to 419-742-2101. And we'll also include uh, links to the Theme Park X article, um, which has a ton of construction photos. um, And that'll be in the show notes as well as in the article on Coaster101.com. And also make sure you're following us on all the socials at Coaster101. And feel free to send us an email at podcast at Coaster101.com if you want to connect with us. Also, uh, very important, we are now selling our annual roller coaster calendar, which is $15 and is available on our website. Or right now you can text calendar to that same number, 419-742-2101. Now, it's important to note that 100% of the proceeds from the calendar sales are going to the Give Kids the World Village, um, which if you don't know what that is, make sure to check that out. It's a great organization, great cause. Uh, And a big shout out, as always, to Yulimi for our text number. That's a new thing we're trying out. So let us know if you try it, how it works. And also shout out to JM Music Design for our theme music. Hope you all have a great week, and we will talk to you next time.